Hey, welcome back to our spare training series. My name is Scott Pecknick, and today I'll be showing you how easy it is to install and configure the Aspera transfer server. First, I'll provide a quick high-level overview of our architecture. Next, we'll walk through the install step-by-step, step, leaving no stone unturned. And finally, we'll test our work by transferring a file from my local machine to our newly configured Aspera transfer server. For simplicity's sake, I'm keeping the architecture very simple. But in real life, where we work with hundreds of Aspera customers, it isn't much more complicated. On my computer, I already have an Aspera client installed, which is the Aspera CLI or command line interface. A server is where we'll be doing most of the work today, installing the Aspera transfer server. And just for informational purposes, I've specifically called out external storage. In the real world, it's best practice to configure your Aspera dock routes, which is where your content is saved on some type of expandable network storage. Note that Aspera can natively write to blob storage in all of the major public clouds. And finally, I'll be configuring my server to run on the default Aspera transfer port, which is 33001. Okay, it's time to see things in action. First, I'll configure our server to ensure it can accept connections on port 33001. Then I'll install Aspera. And then I'll run a test transfer from my local machine to our newly configured Aspera transfer server. So the first thing I'm going to do is SSH into our fresh CentOS 7 server. I provisioned this beforehand in order to save time. Next, I'm going to create firewall rules to accept packets on both TCP and UDP on port 33001. The Aspera Fast protocol uses both TCP and UDP to achieve its incredible transfer speeds. Since I'm running on CentOS, I'll simply run a couple of firewall commands and then reload the firewall rules. Next, we'll need to ensure the SSH daemon is configured to allow connections on port 33001. This is the TCP part of the FAST protocol. Now for security purposes, it's best to disable connections on the default SSH port of 22. But since this is just a lab environment, I'm choosing to keep that open for now. And once I make that change, I'll recycle the SSH daemon for it to take effect. Finally, we're ready to install the transfer server. To save time, I've already moved the installer RPM file to the server. The only dependency we need is Perl, so I'll install that first. And for the sake of time, I'll fast forward through the yum install screen. Now we're ready to install the Aspera transfer server, which is accomplished by simply installing an RPM. I like to use the options V and H for verbose output that shows progress. After the server is installed, that's all we need to do. Time to exit back to our local machine and test a transfer. Recall that my computer already has the Aspera CLI installed. To make a transfer with the CLI, the syntax is very similar to a standard SCP command. I'll start by typing ASCP, set the transfer limit to 1 gigabit using the L flag, point to a large file that I have on my machine, and then specify the destination, which is my newly installed Aspera server, and the location on that machine where I want the file. After supplying my password, notice the transfer speed. Let's recap. Aside from a few minor configuration details, Aspera is quite easy to install. The command line interface is simple, intuitive, and borrows from the familiar SCP command. And finally, for those non-techies, tune in at a later date for a demo of Aspera transfers using one of the Aspera web applications. Thanks for tuning in. For more info, or if you have an inquiry about Aspera, contact sales at packgenesis.com.